Hey Chum, I've got a premium brain dance on the fixer down the road. Let's check it out. An incorrect review of Cyberpunk 2077. Teacher warning, this video has some flashing lights. Oh no. <laughs> Remember all the memes, bad boy. <laughs> Remember all the memes. This is Cyberpunk, good in a bunch of bugs. There we go. Cyberpunk 2077 is the long-awaited sequel to Fallout 2076. Oh my god, I just got the connection. <laughs> 2076. <laughs> and as a product represents the entire economic output of the country of Poland. In this game, you play as the cyberpunk Keanu Reeves' <laughs> biggest fan. Creates a I mean, not wrong. <laughs> Topa of Keanu Reeves that haunts him for the duration of the game. Now a team, the true and shadow Keanu strive to eke out a living in the dangerous yet rewarding. No, you are breathtaking. Night City, offering the very best in Californian living conditions. Come. Together, you navigate the dark street. <laughs> Come. <laughs> It's glitzing high rises and mangled faces of this beautiful metropolis, seeking riches and glory as proud members of Hamas. Under the yoke of crushing poverty, systematic oppression, and runaway monopolies, you stand as Night City's final bastion of defense. Just the normal day in America. <laughs> against a shady underworld of business executives, mercenaries, and caps, and every single kind of ethnicity in existence, daring to strike back. Oh, I just, I just noticed actually. There's like no racism, right, in Cyberpunk. <laughs> When I think about it, yeah. Like at, at at best, it's like or like at worst in quotations, like when the monks don't like the cybernetics or something. Although they are like more, they're like kind of peaceful, so I'm not sure if that counts. It's more like the Amish or something. <laughs> it's up to you and you alone and you and Keanu Reeves to navigate this scary world together yourself and to get to the bottom of who the when is where on top of the six, the near, whatever, and build this city on rock and roll. But to understand <laughs> Cyberpunk, build this city. 2077, you must understand the on world of Night City. Rock. Music is great Night in the game. City is a dangerous place where the internet no longer exists due to nuclear viruses, forcing people to stand up and socialize for entertainment. This has far-reaching consequences. Uh, horror! <laughs> Socializing! Uh, I, can I opt out, maybe? On society, it has resulted in a decadent morass where the poor are forced to rob you for fun. Crime is at an all-time high, advertisements are in the water, and on top of that, everybody is a cyborg with the equivalent speed of a fucking xenomorph. As a result, the city is populated by a series of stereotypical gangs that you can't join or have quests with. Come on, guys, even Todd got this. Wait. Oh my god, he's right. I didn't even, like, notice, actually. What a, what a, like, wasted opportunity. <laughs> Tiger Claws, Six Gang, all the other ones. Dude, like even San Andreas, like GTA has that. Come on. That's right. These consist of the animals who are buffy rated broskies who could break my bitch of a back without busting a fucking breath. Maelstromers who are Adeptus Mechanicus. Moxes who are. <laughs> Adeptus Mechanicus. <laughs> Ethical cock destroyers and suited up giga prostitutes in charge of worker co-op strip clubs. The voodoo boys who are pissed off radical Haitian separatists dedicated to the destruction of the white man. Tiger claws who are the bargain bin yakuza. Valentinos, a generic Hispanic gang who, according to the wiki, have no goals other than outside of seducing women. <laughs> My kind of gay. <laughs> seducing women the sixth street gang who are just groipers and finally the Merc. scabs who are slavic vaporwave enthusiasts that specialize in kidnapping and harvesting your organs oh my god the scavengers i hated them kidnapping people like cutting them apart fucking gruesome it therefore really disappoints me when i figured out that i could only interact yeah. with these gangs about three times each their primary purpose is to be repeatedly fucked with without i mean if you don't code like the the side missions or something but he's right, that's like, what a wasted opportunity to like not be able to join uh, uh, like any of them. Out of the consequence, I am simply fucking surprised that not even- but like, just for like role play's sake, right? I don't know, like being a cool Japanese gangster or something, joining the Tiger Claws or whatever. The basic faction system exists. I once did a favor for a corporate agent in the main quest, and the far-reaching consequence- Oh my god, I remember this. I like started as like um, a corpo. And then I thought like, oh yeah, I gotta help her out. And then that, that's gonna like further my plot for like the corpus or something. And then I can like end up with, I don't know, the corpo ending or something. Or like further the quest line for corpus or whatever. Nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> this is my decision was that I had sex with her. Well, except, except that, I guess. <laughs> Still worth it. That's it. Speaking of corporations, Night City is a place where corporations have run completely amok and are involved. Oh, speaking of which, the corporations, you can't like join any of them either. Like, it doesn't even make sense, like, the, the way you like start the game either, right? 
What are like the starting points again? Corpo? A street? Street boy? Something? <laughs> and like a nom nomadic guy, right? Doesn't even like do anything story-wise, except for like the first hour or something where you do like the tutorial. And like some side dialogue options, which never really did too much in my opinion. Give you like some little tiny bit of insight or something, but other than that, didn't really do much. Involved in every single level of government through lobbying, which isn't corruption because it has a different <laughs> name, guys. In the world of cyberpunk, billions Don't worry are about it. to do as many Bolivian governments as they please. That lithium isn't going to mine itself. Exploit convict oh, slave labor to make hand soap. Make Taiwanese labor laws worse. Engage in literal wars. And also mind control the mayor. That's a quest. All hospitals and ambulances are privatized, and you can pay for the deluxe package to arm your paramedics. You paid to go to that hospital, and goddammit, you're gonna fucking get there. Ultimately, the lore and setting of Cyberpunk 2077 is the best. Oh my god, this was so sad. Like the first episode of Edge Runner. When they got to like the mom and they're like, ah, oh, never mind. She doesn't have a premium plan. God damn. Aspect of the game by far. You can tell just by looking at every single crevice of the city that a poor Polish femboy slave spent hours <laughs> bottling every goddamn recycle bin until his hands bled. The game nice. really sells you on the feeling of being in a crack den and buying Xanax wrapped in a cassette tape and stapled onto a guy's face. Even the most basic side quest areas make Dark Souls 2 look like it's designed by ants. When someone tells me this game took eight years to develop, this is why I believe them. Yeah, it's true. Like, all the details in the game is pretty good. Although, that was like the main cause of like not people not being able to play it <laughs> too much detail <laughs> too much graphics the game runs especially well if you have a computer designed to fight god exactly <laughs> but as controversial as this game's performance is it can be universally although the, 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 i think they fixed most of the bugs by now <laughs> only took them a couple years <laughs> They agreed that the music fucking slaps. This game is jam-packed with the most goddamn amazing copyright-free music I have ever seen. All of it sounds like... Dude, so true. Like, all the music, pretty good. The realistic, as if it is the music of the exist in the fiber skunk world. You got the classic metal, rock, reggae, and Grimes. Grimes is in this fucking game. This is the closest I will ever get to reaching Elon and telling him to stop killing people <laughs> for lithium. I can only imagine a dude in CDPR HQ talking to a suit like, Sir, it is imperative to the success of the game that you allow me to create dank reggae music. But now that you're aware of the world, of Hyperfuck 2077, it's time to get into the combat. When you first play the game, the gameplay mechanics won't seem that complex, and every enemy is kind of a bullet sponge. This will persist yeah. until you unlock the gigantic mantis blades that protrude <laughs> from your arms and fly 50 feet forward. Slice and dice. Like Xenomorph. This is the only goddamn RPG besides Skyrim where melee isn't just viable, it's fucking optimal. I didn't even try to hack or do stealth after I figured. Honestly, a uh, shotgun was pretty viable as well. <laughs> Just go in there, boom. Even like on harder difficulties, it's like when you, as soon as you get like the perk for like um, throwing them away or like shooting them away, basically, stun lock, pretty good. It usually just takes like one or two shots with, the, with a good shotgun and then they're dead. But I get it. I played Gorilla Arms and it was pretty fun. <laughs> one punch, two punch, all dead. Ultimately, the game isn't afraid to let you break it in terms of damage numbers and lets you experiment with true. maybe two or yeah. three different main specializations on top of the basic shooter gameplay. If you stick to a base, honestly, I like like how how many options you have for like making builds. The only downside is that like, you kind of have to like play the story over and over without being able to like skip it because it's so ingrained in like the gameplay. Like the first one or two hours is just like tutorial, and then you run around do some missions which are like also kind of like additional tutorial and then you do like a bigger mission which takes you like four hours or something just to like actually enter the open world kind of kind of <laughs> it's really annoying if you want to like replay the game a couple times rifle and try to do something like aim at enemies like especially like in the beginning you couldn't you couldn't just like reskill so you have to like start a new game and then you have to like play a bunch before you can actually use your build a fucking idiot you're gonna have a bad time so what i recommend is stacking crit damage over several orders of magnitude with a revolver and insta killing every single enemy nice. you see. any shooter that encourages you to be mobile in a fight is more fun than sitting in a corner and blinking and cyberpunk gives That's a lot fair. of incentives to move cyberpunk is also a game where you not only modify skills in a tree but metal in a body such as passive bonuses that i don't care about and the goddamn gorilla <laughs> arms do i need to say more honestly some of those passes were really shitty it's like plus one percent accuracy and it's like but I'm using gorilla arms. <laughs> How is that helping? You can return to monkey. Although when it comes to all these different weapons and specializations, it seems that there isn't much variety in how you specialize. Whatever happened to Skyrim giving an entire... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 
Actually, there's like only three options, I suppose, with like different tree uh, skill trees. It's like shooting, melee, and hacking. And the rest is just like flair, I suppose. Their skill tree dedicated to just being a werewolf. Tech pistols, smart pistols, stupid pistols, revolvers, burst fire. <laughs> have bonuses for all of them or none of them. The combat is fun, but there isn't that much to it, which is why it reminds me of Borderlands. There's also the driving gameplay. I guess that's fair, yeah. The combat isn't too, like, in-depth, unless you'd, like, try to do sneaking or, like, hacking. But even hacking at some point becomes, like, ludicrous. Just go in there, do, like, the, the fucking sickness, everybody dies, barfing, and then just falls unconscious. Except of, like, these play styles, like, sneaking. Although even sneaking is kind of annoying, because as soon as they see you, like, once, then you're kind of fucked. It's like in most RPGs with, like, sneaking systems, and you can't, like, re-hide again. It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, guys. Is it really that difficult to invent a new system for sneaking? <laughs> and it feels like ice skating on a pool of frozen lubricant and dozens of ropes are in the way. Cars have the stopping distance of several fucking city blocks and want to drift for literally every turn. It is... Wow, he's as good as driving as faster in this game to delete your save file and create a new one if you want to travel back to your fucking house. This is because Night City ran out of rubber in the year 2040. I mean, although there are like teleport stations everywhere, right? So maybe maybe they weren't implemented in the, in the beginning. I forgot. Have subsequently been making tires out of the increasingly rotted corpse of the Michelin Man. Open world. When it comes to the open world or dynamic gameplay, I mean I like the open world, but it feels kinda empty in a way. Like especially with like if you can't join the factions. Plus, it's like there's only a couple side quests everywhere, and then there's like nothing much to it. It's like one shop every, I don't know, 10 blocks, or like, I don't know, different, there's, there's like nothing going on. <laughs> I'm really glad that it didn't take the GTA 5 route where you play tennis once and then get fucking bored. I mean, that is fair though. Although, having the option is, it's uh, all it takes, right? Sure, there's like annoying mini games in GTA 5, but at least they're there. <laughs> if you're sitting there not knowing what to do because you robbed the 10th bank, I guess I play some tennis for once. Oof. Mr. Boss for the win here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a full-length tennis match. Instead, the Boys. game saturates itself with small, numerous side quests where 90% of the time you're paid to go somewhere, kill everyone, and then leave with no. <laughs> yeah, th th those are like most of the quests. That's true. Once. The side quests are the dynamic gameplay. This isn't a game where you go hunting. My biggest issue with the entire game thus far is that the side quests are either William Shakespeare fucking masterpieces or they have micro stories that are summarized in two sentences. Let's walk through a side quest. You go to drive a weird guy somewhere. <gasps> Fuck, what's his name? <laughs> Boom face or something. He gets out of the car, goes to the store. Oh no, he actually robbed the store. Then you kill everyone. Congrats, the quest is over. No further Noise. development. Fuck you. I would trade eight of- There was a follow-up quest down with him. I think like two actually. Or was it just one? I forgot. It's like uh, part of the boxing one, where you can accidentally <laughs> hit his nose and then he explodes. These fucking quests to get a decent one. It's like you're playing a weird mixture between Fallout New Vegas and a Ubisoft game. The Witcher 3 had something similar, but in The Witcher 3, I was actually surprised sometimes. Let's look at the better half of this. There are side quests that are fucking eight missions long. You learn the entire backstory for an ensemble of enterprising actors and then crucify them on live television. <laughs> I can't stress enough how actually God... Dude, the quest was mental like the writing for these quests are when the developers decide to write words an impressive cut. impressive although i think i didn't do the side quest because they give you like a couple options to just say like come on leave 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 and then at some point i was like okay i guess i just leave that <laughs> and then i missed the whole fucking crucifixion part I guess it just was kind of odd to me because it's like a prisoner being escorted by police and he's trying to like convince me for something. Especially like the whole religion part, which I'm like generally not too much into. <laughs> so it's like, uh, do I really want to like look at his fucking religious, I don't know, <laughs> enlightenment? Yeah, I gonna opt out and then I miss the best part. My God. There is a side quest in this game involving a meticulous search with a skilled detective to track down and locate a serial killer using only your wit. Oh, to be honest, I think I missed like most of the, of like the good quests in, the, in my first time playing through because the game gives you like a weird feeling of urgency. Plus I couldn't get to like um, Johnny Silverhand, at least in my first playthrough because he starts out trying to kill you, <laughs> and then he acts like your friend. But 
is constantly pissy and like annoying and insults you all the time. So I was like, nah, nah, I'm not, not gonna fall for your tricks, Mr. Johnny. <laughs> so I kind of like tried to see him as an antagonist or like an annoyance. Like, you know, like a demon when you're like a warlock in D&D and they try to convince you from something and then I just went like automatically. No, no, I don't wanna, no, go away. <laughs> So I kind of missed out on the whole like friendship with Johnny, plus like on a bunch of side quests because of the urgency. I thought, yeah, I just gotta like do the main quest real quick and then afterwards, yeah, afterwards I'm gonna do like all the side missions, side quests and everything, because then I have time, right? Didn't, didn't, didn't work out that way. <laughs> but at least I played it like a couple more times, so. I feel like I've found like most of the things. An underground battle for control of a strip club from the clutches of organized crime and a complex family feud in a biker gang. Or I can play the same murder spree in a single room 16 fucking times. This game is like reading six dirty copies of War and Peace and then every 20 pages you have to stare at cardboard. Imagine for a moment that you're a Militech guard in the beautiful Night City. You see this weird guy running down the street wearing 14 different colors like a goddamn clown when suddenly his arms open up like a fucking alien to reveal two gigantic oh my sword God. appendages. I think I've never actually played with the mantis blades i chose like the gorilla arms maybe i should like replay with the mantis blades <laughs> mantis blades and hacking maybe mm, i don't know i gotta want to play again and he leaps directly into you from 15 feet away your buddy goes to shoot him but instead of fighting back the fucker disassembles an entire rifle in front of him <laughs> i mean it's the same gameplay with skyrim right you run in there kill like every bandit and then the bandit chief like is standing right in front of you and then you just like Get your backpack out and eat like 20 wheels of cheese. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like staring at you. Oh my god, how can he eat so much cheese? And once he's done killing everyone, he sits perfectly still for 24 hours straight. <laughs> that is the true open world experience. Skyrim, as I said. <laughs> and having so many interesting little elements to the quests and their effect on the world that you never had to find the fun. Well, most of Crying Trunks quests have me going, oh yeah, this is a video game. I never felt like these quests improved my relationship with Freeside or helped the NCR. They were just there to waste my time. In fact, let's stop comparing things to Fallout New Vegas forever since it's the perfect game. Don't let Todd hear about this conversation. That is... <laughs> <laughs> I still have a plate in New Vegas! Dude, I have to like get around it. Maybe after like uh, Metal Gear Rising. I'm gonna play that. Side, there are a good 30 to 40 hours of meaningful content in this game. You don't have to do all the gigs uh, unless you're reviewing the game. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're me. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to play New Vegas, but at the same time, it's like, it's a huge game, right? It's like at least 100 hours to play through. If you like look at every quest and stuff, but maybe, maybe, maybe I'm gonna do it. We'll see. I guess we'll see. And you might just have to. Night City also suffers from an issue where all the police are in a state of quantum superposition. Oh my god, I hated that. <laughs> Teleports behind you. Nothing personal, kid. Far away and nearby at all times. Meaning, oh my if god. a citizen were to commit a crime, the cops would simply quantum tunnel directly outside their code. <laughs> this is because the aforementioned Michelin <laughs> droughts of 2040 caused the police to give up driving entirely. There is no driving AI in the game. Nobody can drive, not even you. This is why the cops teleport, because they... Did they like finally patch in that there's like motorcycles on the street? I want motorcycles. I don't want to just buy them all the time. It can't actually drive to the scene of crime, so the game pretends you don't notice, but you fucking notice. It just makes the world feel kind of dumb and not that reactive. It's not fun to commit crimes in night fucking city. That is fair. Uh, I don't know. Did they just release it too soon? It feels like they released it too soon, right? No factions, either the gangs or like the corporations. No real like crime system where you can like, I don't know, do anything, rob a bank. Although maybe people would have like compared it too much with like GTA 5 or something. Is that really a bad thing? <laughs> I guess it can be. Although I feel like that would be a huge, <laughs> a huge difference and like maybe a better option to be compared to like GTA 5 instead of this is all buggy bullshit. <laughs> There aren't enough dynamic mechanics to make the world feel alive, which is fine, but the picosecond quests aren't filling the fucking gap. No. Which is a shame, because the world design almost does! Yeah, is that still the case? I feel like they patched a lot, and they... Did they bring out a DLC yet? I think they did, right? Dude, maybe... Maybe this is my chance to replay it, actually. Hmm... Hmm... <laughs> Baxter, what are you doing to me? Every time I watch one of your videos, I want to play video games. Which, you know what, fair enough. I kind of want to play video games. 
Yeah. I'm not going to forget about Little Japan's shitty alleyways filled with hollow prostitutes, Watson's red glow at night, the Badlands rotting windmills, or how in Pacifica they want me dead for killing that innocent girl in 2004. <laughs> so when you're done Wait, with what? 40 hours of epic adventures, daring escapes, and thrilling car chases, the game doesn't seem to have enough to keep me playing. But let's rewind for enough. a moment to talk about what makes those first 40 hours satisfying and fun. Spoilers for the rest of the video. I've saved this part for last in case you're a child or seeing this 10 years from now after Mechaji's world takeover. In which case, Chu Chu Vibia Xiao Wu. Like the Witcher 3, the main I mean, currently, China is like doing some shit, so maybe this is actually coming true someday. Quest is actually not written by gorillas. In the years following Skyrim's release, Polish scientists were able to extract and locate the hidden element known as being fucking subtle and are mostly able to apply it to the world of cyberpunk 2077 the game is willing to stop and give you quiet moments with the characters as if they're written to be like people and not the apes that live near ubisoft montreal that speaking cool, of characters yeah. the main quest is primarily comprised of v the world's last schizophrenic and keanu <laughs> <laughs> who plays as himself and even then he's improperly cast are you still rolling it's hard to see keanu as a super badass through his overacting voice but that's okay because the game does everything else in its power to make sure that you think he is badass and it works the sections where you play as johnny are straight up power fantasies where you use keanu's dashing looks oh yeah a mythical female orgasm becoming john wick <laughs> so the story of fiber junk is one where the true and shadow keanu begin in opposition but through a slow web of corporate entanglement gang warfare and strip club participation learn to love one another and grow as people except only john uh, grows as a person i had like a bad first playthrough because i saw him like as the enemy because he tried to kill me in all the flashbacks he's like an asshole he's constantly insulting me so it's like and the few times where i like tried to like you know what yeah sure here take the reins bam what's the first thing that happens he tattoos me <laughs> he gives me a tattoo and he's like taking even more pills to stay in the body even longer and then i was like no, you know what? I tried to give you a chance. I gave you the little finger and you took the whole fucking ass hand. And then that's that's at that point I was I was seeing him as like a lying asshole who tries to kill me and or like take over my body, just trying to sweet talk me into like, no no no. I totally am here for helping you. <laughs> like, ah I don't believe you. Rip. Kind of messed up my, my first playthrough, as I said. This is for the best because V can look like Peter Griffin, and goddammit, it, I want to roleplay as Peter fucking Griffin. The game also introduces no, 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 no. villains that I love and can understand their fuck mentality. For most villains like Placide, you don't even think of them as villains, just people acting in their own interests. Like Stalin, Cyberpunk is able to effectively frame its struggles as a story of survival, of personal interest against what is truly right, which is why I can sympathize with Johnny for causing 9 11. And though I don't agree, <laughs> I can totally understand Saburo's decision to melt those orphans into useful paper. That got me motivated to stop him. The mentality of these people uniquely corresponds to the wider world, one where human life means nothing and everyone is out for themselves, just like America. What I didn't appreciate is that through the game, the main quest gives you a false sense of urgency when they're- Oh my god, yes! That's like an additional part of like why I tried to like rush through the first time I was playing because I thought, oh no, gotta go fast, everybody says I'm dying. <laughs> I have to figure out a solution. Plus, I was in, under the impression like most open world RPGs, you can like, you know, finish the quests after the main story. <laughs> so I thought like, yeah, just go to like the, the, the thing because it's, it seems to be urgent. Get rid of Johnny and then, then you can do like all the side missions with all the side characters and everything. But it didn't didn't pan out anyway. Is none. Peter Griffin repeatedly suffers from schizophrenic episodes that cause his eyeballs to enter screensaver mode. Every yeah, single yeah. character in existence urges you to finish the story and save your life as fast as possible, but it will never matter until the plot decides that it matters. If you do all of the yep. side quests, B is the equivalent of a sickly paper bag carrying a shotgun with 50 <laughs> hydraulic toasters attached. And one of those toasters used to be a rock star before a geriatric Japanese man ate his soul. The game insists that you're weak and dying when in reality you've killed thousands of people at the fucking hospital window. Oh, you know what would have been cool? Kind of like an edge runner where you could like, where you get like cyber psychosis because of Johnny in your brain or something. You could have seen like Jackie or like your other friends or like the enemies that you've already killed. Like your fixer. Oh my God. <laughs> that would have been a great, great part of the story or something. Damn, missed opportunity. Again. <laughs> Especially like in the beginning as well with like Jackie. You did like two missions with him or like three. And then the game acts like it's a gigantic loss. I'm uh, sure it felt like a loss. <laughs> 
can't deny that. <laughs> but at the, at the same time, you didn't spend too much time in quotations as the player. Sure, as the character, like six months or whatever it was, like uh, joining the new life or whatever. But I feel like they could have like implemented more missions with Jackie, just to like you know, even if it's like not scripted missions like that um, uh, with the drone, like getting the drone from Maelstrom. Just like having him like a, I don't know, companion, a follower or something. Like funny lines sometimes or something. It's a good game otherwise. It's like just feels like they, they missed out on like so much for some reason. But it's jarring. Lastly, people are mad online that you can't continue what? the main quest. I cannot understand it. <laughs> Especially the way I played the, the first time through. It's like... I thought I could just like continue afterwards. Because they are wombats. And if you fuckers somehow convince CDPR to patch in a post game, I will eat a cricket on camera. Is this game worth your money? I wouldn't necessarily want it to have like a game afterwards or like a continuation necessarily. Sure, it'd be nice to like see how, how it pans out or whatever, but I wanted it to like, you know, finish the quests I was ignoring because of the urgency. Probably, unless you have a PS4, in which case you've already been sent to the Black Pit of Shale, Rip. from which you will never return. I'd like to thank the monetary contributions of the oil barons and media conglomerates that fund my channel and keep it operational. If you would like to contribute your blood diamond money harvested from the recesses of African child Good labor, bankers. you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching, and of course, death to Arasaka. <laughs> death to Arasaka! Paid for by Miltech. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Paid by Militech. <laughs> what a great video. I love Cyberpunk. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm not gonna click through anymore. I feel like I have a bad talent at like finding the perfect frame that like gets me into trouble. A dick gun. Isn't that like a <laughs> Isn't that an episode in Rick and Morty with his like belt cannon or whatever? Groin cannon? Anyway, great video from Maxer. Please support him. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye bye.